Hey everyone, Elio here, recording a new uh, video playing the Emergence Trading Card Game. This time I'm playing a free-to-play deck uh, that you can build right out of the box and, and play it if you want to. Deck list should be in the comments. Uh, I'm going to talk through the deck a little bit and then jump into some games. Uh, so, first of all, this deck is a kind of aggro mid-range deck with a combo finish. That combo that we have is using Blockbuster who's a 10-6 for 8 and 2 non-stop yellow, uh, who has evasion, uh, and when he readies, if you don't have enough production, then he returns to your hand. So basically you can't wild card him out uh, early uh, uh, without him coming back to hand and not being able to get his damage in. Uh, we can cast him naturally and finish off games, but also we will occasionally try to use Coax Dreamweaver to get him out early and to maybe get some uh, even one turn kills, one turn kills with him. Coax is a 3-5 uh, for 6 and 2 Sculptor Red Energy. Uh, when you wild card a character, if Coax is ready, you can use Coax to forge an eager temporary copy of the wild carded card. Um, so we can play Coax on, on 6 and immediately discard Blockbuster and get an eager 10-6 temporary uh, uh, character attacking in with evasion. Uh, we also have Fire Sculpture, which creates a copy of target character we control. We can copy Coax and make sure that we're getting two Blockbusters coming in, attacking for 20. If it's a longer game and we're actually casting Blockbuster, then maybe we can just get two natural Blockbusters, which is incredibly hard to deal with. Uh, Acrobatic Sidekick is a 2-4 uh, with evasion for 5 and 2 nonstop yellow, that when it attacks, will give another target character uh, flurry, uh, so again, with Blockbuster, can turn that 10 damage into 20 very easily. Um, the rest of the deck is uh, mostly a kind of uh, a standard things that you may see in a uh, aggressive red and uh, yellow build. Uh, After Image, who I love in all my uh, uh, non-stop decks, uh, it's very easy to cycle it and make sure that you have uh, non-stop built, plus you have follow-up plays by playing this card in subsequent turns when you have that. Uh, Second Wind, uh, nice combat trick. Mad Confectionist, uh, great early one-drop for red uh, that continues to create chump blockers if that's what you need. Scorch, dealing two damage to any target alongside our uh, single Fire Nova uh, to try to clear out the board, uh, and our three whip trips to slow any attacking uh, characters coming our way in case people are trying to race us. Uh, but uh, then we have three Fire Razor and three Leah. Leah can create a very wide and large board so that if our opponent is more prepared for our endgame blockbuster plan, they also need to be prepared for how much damage we can throw out early. And Fire Razor gets bigger not from just Leah's plants, but from copies of Blockbuster, from copies of Mad Confectionist, or uh, after image that comes after you cycler. Uh, uh, this fire razor can get pretty easily big in this deck and just be a, an annoying threat for your opponent. Uh, sidestep, uh, when your rival targets a character you control, all characters you control temporarily gain untargetable. Uh, this is a great spell for, again, protecting our combo pieces in the late game. Uh, and finally, we have uh, Beacon, Light in the Darkness. Uh, just a 3-3 three, three for 3 that can also uh, burn and deal damage to some of your opponent's uh, annoying units. Uh, again, some decks, uh, this card is uh, just fantastic and a uh, must answer for them. In other decks, it may just be a 3-3 three, three for 3, which we're not, we're not upset with having. Uh, that's the deck. Uh, gonna jump into some games and, and see how it plays out. some evasion kind of things. Looks like they're heavy on the red though, so we'll see. Um, start off cycling our after image. Uh, just free cycle there, and we'll use that to kind of play out our after image. Well, sorry, we don't build that initially. But we're always just gonna play this out. Um, start getting some damage in. Uh, maybe have a blocker built up. Um, on our opponent's side, um, they are the same colors. Uh, and they've got a Joy Buzzer uh, wild card to build up the red. Um, uh, maybe trying to build up that kind of uh, forge copy uh, shenanigans. Um, I 
have a choice here to make. I think I'm gonna get rid of one of these fire sculptures. Um, getting two of those off is, is a lot, um, and I need to build this red up. So um, I'd rather have a beacon available to remove any of his aggressive threats. Uh, and these other guys are also just key for um, making sure I have a strong early game. And I have already some good end game stuff in my hand that I've got plenty, especially given I'm going to have a lot of draws uh, later on. Um, here, do we have red on top so we can go ahead and play out Fire Razor and the Mad Confectionist? Um, doing this over playing Deacon, because this may be a sidestep, and I don't want to be in an awkward spot where I'm trying to be play, play, keeping the board clear, and I end up using all of my resources in an awkward way, removing something that doesn't even get removed. Um, I'd rather be on the offense uh, while my opponent's giving me that opportunity. Uh, this could also be a, um, a second wind. Um, those are the two most likely options that I'm kind of facing here. Um, fine with that. Um, I'll go and play a um, second Mad Confectionist so that this becomes a four power. And if this is a second wind, I'd gladly let him trade those two, um, two for one. Um, but if it's not, he's definitely on the back foot. Um, and I still have this to uh, trade with his three one. Um, I also, of course, have a strong late game and being able to copy these blockbusters or, or something like that. Um, The opponent is thinking. Um, difficult to say if this is likely to be a second wind or a sidestep. I really think it's even odds here, though my money is on second wind. This might be a whip trip, might be a scorch. If it's a scorch, I think I would just use it on this and shrink this, but maybe not. Um, if I don't get a yellow on top, I'll probably just try to beacon kill and eat the sidestep if that's what it is. Though, if I don't have other removal, is that really worth doing? Because I could play out a Mad Confectionist, and now this continues to grow larger. And... Ooh, interesting. Okay, I'll see if this is a sidestep, or... Could also be Novang soon if that's the case. Yeah, I'm just gonna play this out here and um, and we will uh, attack in. So I'm not sure that's a whip trip. Uh, if not, I mean, uh, so it might be a Scorch, might be, yep, yeah, okay, so if he's going to try to trade there, that's fine. Um, I'd rather him do that um, than be setting up a, a Nova or something like that. Um, uh, we're in a good position to be getting uh, big blockbusters out in a short amount of time. And... Um, And winning in that way. Do you have this, so we can build up this uh, sidekick. Um, uh, if he's got a uh, fire nova, he can go ahead and use it, uh, which that does seem like that, what, that does seem what that is likely to be. Um, um, 
it does make me want to hold back this blockbuster until we can stop two novas from hitting us um because that is a, a pain, painful way to lose um this game um uh he is playing out his own acrobatic which does put me into an awkward spot. Um, I kind of want to play out this beacon. Yeah, I'll play out this beacon. I'll uh, do two to this and then finish off with the scorch. Okay, so, you, right, so that happens. Get rid of the sidestep. Maybe we start to bait out the, the Nova. Um, uh, and I'll save these cards up. For, for my turn. Um, what, what I can do here is potentially... Yeah, I really just want him to cast this Nova. Um, if he's not going to cast it this time, um, then I'll try to ready this and go for this move again. Though that may be another sidestep. Could be just playing two Novas here. Um, all of that is, you know, really what we're trying to do here is play around double Nova. Um, go and ready this. If there's another side step here, we're going to attack into it. There it is, okay. Eventually we'll get there. Um, and I'll probably play a Confectionist now. Um, give him one meat to attack into with uh, his Nova. He keeps drawing, so he could continually be sidestepping the whole time. Um, we're hoping that he eventually misses on sidestep. Um, but we don't want to have to deal with all these novas. Um, we want to get rid of them. Um, he could also you know, have a fire sculpture on his side. Uh, we don't really know. Um, I assume one of these is a sidestep. I'm still going to throw out this beacon and try to uh, get past it. Sidestep number three. to him, let him Nova if that's what he wants to do. He has a lot of big red out. All that's pretty scary. But um, we're just biding our time. Our, our game. Okay, so he's maybe doing the same kind of thing that we're doing. Okay, he is. So there's a fire sculpture. Okay, it makes two blockbusters. Um, we can chomp one of those. Maybe he's going to... Nova. <laughs> See what this last spell is. Okay, 
This is it. Him versus me. Tax with everything because one of these. Uh, double one of these guys flurry. We'll block that one with the 1-1. One, one. Go ahead and scorch this. Block that, block that. Doesn't have follow through, right? Yeah, okay. It doesn't can. Down to 15. We can basically do the same thing on our side. Um, I want to reset my uh, wild card to zero, or to 10%. So I'm gonna keep casting these confection. Oh, so there's the one confectionist. Um, we play a coax, similar to him, we copy our coax. We make a blockbuster. And now we are the one attacking for a bunch. Gonna play out this whip trip for a good measure. Attack with this. Attack with these two. Make sure they're both attacking. Get a trigger. We'll pump this. And it's a lot of damage coming in. He needs to have double flirt. He needs to have double nova. They've got uh, blue and purple. Um, I have played against them with a different deck, so I, I do know a little bit about what they're doing, um, which is uh, kind of making me discard things and playing big threats. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle this after image, um, build our yellow. Next turn, we can either play that or maybe play Aaliyah, depending on what we draw. Um, uh, these beacons may help clear out some some early threats from him, uh, and also give us something to do uh, if he starts clearing out our hand. Uh, no play from him, I think, is a mistake. Um, new players sometimes don't recognize that you have to wild card or build something in order to get that generic energy. So always do something. Um, Otherwise, you'll end up like this guy. Okay, he gets a, um, a card shark out, so that does help him kind of even up that balance. Uh, uh, I can get this beacon out now, uh, which could draw. Um, I would actually trade this 3-3 for the 4-3 um, because we've got two more beacons in hand um, and I'm not going to be able to use all that red, um, so might as well. Uh, the 
things that I'm kind of worried about in his deck is the, the bigger they are, which makes you discard your two highest cost cards in your hand. Um, I've got a uh, Blockbuster in hand that I'd love to be able to actually get out and start uh, attacking with. Uh, Sunder on his side now makes me kind of want to use Beacon to kill it rather than uh, make that trade there. Um, but we'll see what we what we, what we draw. Um, we may still trade here initially and then use the second Beacon to kill the Sunder. Um, uh, that's a little bit more effective use of our resources. Um, uh, but it, it all kind of depends on what we draw. Um, a Fire Razor on our side, that's actually going to be a 3 power. Um, we can play out Leah and uh, this, and this makes it so the attacks with Sunder. Um, Leah's now threatening some uh, a lot of creation uh, on our side with a big fire razor. So, kind of like this. Uh, we can also draw into red and potentially get a uh, beacon plus the kill on our next turn. Um, opponent's definitely on the back foot uh, with this with this draw. Sunder a 4 1, you know, follow through, draw a card from the rival's deck. See if he goes for an attack here, or if he realizes that he needs to hold things back to, to stop this uh, Leah army. He is going in for an attack. Uh, puts us at 21, but we're, um, we're just going to take that. Um, and we can build a beacon on our side. Uh, prepare this second wind and also play out this map infectionist. We'll build a red so that we can start using these beacons. Um, but we will go and attack in with everything because uh, uh, we don't know when the sun is going to come undone. And he either has to um, he has to kill the Leah now, but now this forge flame razor is just so big, um, it's going to create a lot of trouble for him. I assume he's going to block Lee. I think that that's his best move. Um, he could also potentially like vanish one of these guys, and oh, but he, it's too late now um, since he's already in the blocker step. Um, but if he had vanished one of the forged guys, the uh, flame rays would have gone down for attack, gone down to four attack, and he would be able to actually start getting in. Um, He no longer has that option, um, and now he's just really on the back foot in a, in a color pairing that doesn't have a lot of ways to do with this kind of thing. There's seismic strike, so we just kind of want to make sure we live to that point. Um, and we want to make sure that we're putting on enough pressure that he's never... Um, uh, take a turn off to do something like the bigger they are, because we do want to eventually finish off with Blockbuster. So we can go ahead and kill this Sunder. Um, uh, we can ready this, so it's a four attack, and it would trade with this, but we can also just attack straight up. And we can play our Mad Confectionist, buffing this to a six of toughness, so it lives past this. Um, and attacking with all these things, now gives him a really awkward situation where he blocks the beacon, he still trades, and he takes 10 damage. Um, and he has to really block one of these two, I think, because otherwise he's... Well, he could go down to one life, but that is not a good place to be. Um, he's going to have to wildcard a seismic strike um, if he has a shot of uh, surviving from this point. Given that, um, we will 
hold back our uh, cards in hand if the out is a seismic strike because um, we don't want okay striking is now we have uh, attempted a few game pieces this guy and running into some issues hopefully this one ends up a good game he's running a uh, alkalite and uh sculptor this purple and red uh he's kind of an aggressive tempo deck where he tries to get some early uh, threats out kind of like uh, Leah and then uses those uh, alongside um, bounce in uh, uh, the acolyte to try to clear the way and, and get some good tempo plays um, I am going to go ahead and build out this yellow um, uh, and pass the turn to him Uh, he builds out this, maybe counter first card, maybe um, something else. Uh, we'll get rid of this fire razor, not going to be doing anything with it anytime soon, um, and continue to build out. I do believe that he's playing maybe, he's definitely playing the counter the first card you play. He may be count playing the counter um, if you spend all your energy, we'll, we'll find out soon. Um, I want to be in a place where I'm maybe sculpting something big down the line. I just want to kind of clear the board out. Okay, a beacon from his side. Um, I I'll play my own after image and we'll see maybe now what his spell is. It's the count of the first card you play, it's not. We'll play a Scorch, not playing into um, that red here. I'll go that yellow because we can get red later. Um, not playing into his spell, that would counter something if we played all the energy. Um, what we want to do is make this game go long, which with this out, you know, he's going to start getting some threats, some damage in, so. Um, we may even just initially trade here just to save five life. Um, but it depends what we draw, as is often the case. Um, I don't think so. I'll, I'll, I'll let us get some things in now that we drew this mad confectionist. Um, and our own beacon will uh, kind of come in and uh, offer a trade with his beacon. I'm not going to play the Confectionist yet, because I think this will counter whatever we have to play. Um, I think he, yeah, he, he wild carded a Vanish initially, so it's unlikely that the second card is another Vanish. It really is most likely going to be the um, counter if they spend all their mana. It could be a discard too if they block. Um, no, that costs three mana, so I, I feel confident that that's what's, what's going on here. Um, Get a damage in. We've had a wild card, a lot of cards here. Um, our turn, maybe even just play two confectionists. I think he was kind of maybe trying to play around a whip trip with that attack, um, which we're fine with.
Devastatrix or whatever. Devastrix? How do you say this? Devastatrix, yeah. Um, we will block. Gladly play our own two mad confectionists. And, and start kind of playing a jumping game. Uh, may get our, our Leah out here in a second. But we'll see kind of what we're drawing here. Um, we're nearing a place when, you know, as long as we survive a long time, um, we can get a lot of combo stuff out. Um, and so that's the name of our game. Um, uh, this is always kind of coming in for five, which is going to start getting scary. Um, but we want to make him afraid of us. So we'll see how we do that. Um, probably can we can possibly fire sculpture next turn, um, uh, and then set up the double coax the next turn. Um, Ooh, interesting. Okay, so if he attacks with this, we can't block. He's playing out uh, a one mana uh, thing there. Um, I think we do double chomp, take four. Fire Sculpture, Cycle the After Image, okay, we does come out, um, and we'll play a second After Image and eat this counter. Okay, that's not what that is. So is it a Vanish? Build red here. I think it's a vanish then, right? Um, or it could be a tail of the tapes, but that doesn't seem very likely. Um, scorch on one of our things, that's fine. Trip out here now, though. Oh, it's all very scary. Might be counting the first thing we play, so let's block with one of these. Go to 12. to go for this. Okay. I think this is the one I just played. There's always a possibility. Game's not over yet. Um, of that being a vanish, it's pretty scary. Hmm. Maybe 
is over. Okay, that is over. Okay, playing against Johnny Darko, uh, running gear red, which looks like robots. Uh, we'll go ahead and save the Scorch for later, remove some of those gears, uh, some of those units um, with that. Um, he does appear to be a new player, zero win so far. Hopefully it's still a good game and he understands the mechanics. Um, We have two Leas here, which we can use to uh, generate a lot of offensive power. Um, but he could have his own Scorches on his side. Okay, and we're going. He starts off by wild carding a Dislike, building up that uh, gear energy and uh, passing to our turn, and we can go ahead and play out our Leah and start threatening our opponent uh, if they can't do something about this. Um, he does not have red built yet, so if he does have a Scorch, he doesn't have an answer for this uh, in the immediate term. Um, special delivery um, is okay. We'll kind of just let those sit for now, and then we may Scorch one at one point just to make sure that there's not enough attack power to kill Leah, if and when we attack. Um, I could play out Beacon here, but I kind of want a Leah because if he doesn't have the proper tools to uh, build something out on his turn, then we can maybe attack with both these and start making tons of plants and force him into a situation where he needs toxic fumes. Um, now that could be the fumes. Now he's placed two things here, so that may be a uh, rebot, um, and there's a scorch. Um, that's fine. Uh, if we get a yellow here, we may do another kind of off-tempo thing by playing the sidestep. We did. Okay, cool. So play the sidestep. Start building up Mad Confectionist. That could also be giving something minus a uh, toughness. Um, once again, we will uh, save these Scorches for a time when we can get uh, some value by attacking with Leah and the Confectionist um, so that we're uh, making plants and he has to do something about it. Um, he does have a flame stroker on his side now. Um, I think that I just kill that while I can. I could. Okay, so I can kill. I can do two to this, and I can scorch these two things. Um, but if this is a rebot. Then this will live. So we'll just scorch this. Um, and we'll save this scorch. Because I I think that this still may be a rebot, and I don't want to use it on a 1 1 if that's the case. We will attack with a 1 1 off of the trade. Um, now, if he has a rebot, um, then, okay, it's focused fire. Um, we are nearing a lethal turn. I always want to be aware of his dislikes and stuff like that. I may just want to be building to a place where I can fire Sculpture plus Blockbuster in the same turn. Um, that way, he just needs a lot of dislikes in order to actually be able to handle me. Um, okay, 
to fight from his side. Um, so he's starting to build up a lot of power. I may need to be more aggressive than I intended. We'll find out soon enough. If he does attack here, I will just... I'll Scorch one. Ooh. Okay, so we can play Coax out. We'll Scorch one of these. We'll put some pressure on him by attacking. Um, I could go ahead and Blockbuster attack. Because I have the Fire Sculptor, is it worth it to get an attack in now? In the next turn, I could be presenting lethal. I think so. Okay. So this lets us make a fire sculptor or a blockbuster with this. We attack with um, uh, three things this turn, making two additional plants, 10 of which should. Uh, a lot of this damage is going to get through. He's going to trade at least one of these. Uh, and. Uh, Next turn, we can Fire Sculptor the Cooks, making a copy of it, and then making two Blockbusters. Um, we'll also have Beacon Up uh, to get rid of some things, uh, or just you can tend to his face if that's what the situation calls for. Or two to its face, if that's what the situation calls for. But I think we just attack, if that's what we see. Um, okay, so this means he's using his mana, so he's not going to have... Uh, well, he only has one gear left, so... He's basically not going to have a way to remove two blockbusters, so I can use beacon on the face. That's interesting. Okay, that's dead. Um, so I don't get Blockbuster immediately. It's a very close game. Um, you can attack in. Five. Okay. Okay. So I do think that we play the fire razor. Now it's a question of. I think we play fire sculptor because it allows us to potentially. That we could. The Mad Confectionist makes this bigger, and we could kill something with this. And the Mad Confectionist blocks one of these, which is pretty effective. And we really only need one blockbuster. Kind of like that. Okay, well, Mad Confectionist will kill a 3 1 proactively. Just trying to stay alive. Um, don't want him to get under us and surprise us and do something that like uh, throws away this game. It is a very close game, but I think that we can lock it out if we play correctly. Um, the base tricks is one of those scary things. Um, uh, and in fact, it's very scary because it can deplete our blockbuster. Ooh, but we can ready it. A second wind. Okay. That's great. He's 
still might have dislike in hand. So we'll see where we go from here. Could have also drawn a second dislike. Both are possibilities. Okay, so he's depleting the blockbuster. That means he doesn't have the energy for a dislike, um, which means our second wind and fire sculpture uh, is a play available to us. Focused fire is a very big debt. Okay, he doesn't have that. So now um, anything that he draws will be a, a wild card play. We can ready our blockbuster. Oh, but he has. Okay, we have beacon. <laughs> Do we need to get rid of this thing? Then we fire sculptor on this, get another copy. Uh, go ahead and discard our hand, because if he's going for lethal this turn, or if he does get lucky with a dislike, we need to be able to block if possible. Question is attack with this. If he has fumes, then all these things die anyway. Okay. Is it enough? One wild card chance gets in there. Okay. Uh, that's all the games for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know uh, if there's any kind of content you'd like to see, whether or not that's more free-to-play decks and decks uh, that are just creative brews, competitive, uh, or non-gameplay content in general. Uh, let me know in the comments, uh, and if you're interested, please like and subscribe.